using practice exams as you watch, learn, and conquer. The reaction I usually get when I tell people about the practice exams up at CBT Nuggets is, quote, what? You guys have practice exams? End quote. And it's amazing how many people don't know about this feature. Our objective in this nugget is simple. It's to let you know, first of all, that there are practice exams available at CBT Nuggets. And secondly, how to get the most use out of those exams. So we'll take a look at each of these. First of all, who gets access to the practice exams, where they located, and most importantly, how to take full advantage of them. So let's address the very first question that is who exactly gets access to the practice exams? And the answer is that's individuals who have an annual subscription to CBT Nuggets. It's a win-win scenario. If you want to pay month to month, that's fine. But if you commit to a year, you get a discount off that annual price and you get access to the practice exams. For our next question, it is where are these exams located? How do I access them if I am an annual subscriber? And the answer is we can get to them a couple different ways. If we click on video training right here, we then have revealed to us these tabs and under exam prep, if we click on exam prep, that leads us to all of the practice exam content available. And we can either scroll through this list, which is quite extensive, or if you wanna search for something specific, you can actually put in a keyword like, for example, network plus, and it will filter the list based on the keywords that you're searching for. Another way to see if there's an exam prep associated with a video series that you're currently working with is we could go back to that video training. So I'll click on video training and let's look for example, network plus, and here's a network plus right here. If we're in that series and we're watching a video, so here's network concepts, 101 OSI versus TCP IP. If we watch that video and we scroll down just a little bit right here, if there is a link for exam prep that indicates that there's practice exam content associated with this video series that you're watching. So if we click right here, it'll take us to that list of practice exam content. Either way of getting there is perfectly fine. So to this point, we know who gets access to the exams, where they're located and how to get to them. And the last piece I want to share with you is how to get the most of these practice exams. So let's bring up as an example, network plus again. And let's select the transcender practice exam by clicking on the start button. And here we have three different ways of interacting with these practice exams. This option right here gives us a very flexible and customizable practice exam experience. So to demonstrate, let's open this up. And what I want to share with you is how customizable this is. If you want to take, for example, 25 questions out of the 436 that are available in this bank, we can simply put in, Hey, I want 25. It'll give us 25 random questions. Or let's say we want to focus on a specific area, like for example, uh, network media and topologies. We say, you know what? Give me 25 just out of that section. Or you could say, I want just single answer or multiple answer or interactive, which may include things like drag and drop as part of a question in this practice exam. Or we could search, for example, for keywords. For example, if we only want to see questions with the keywords of say network layer, and then we'd be shown only questions that had the keywords of network layer in it. Another really cool feature is that it's tracking your success as you go along. So let's say you've taken a few practice exams and you've missed a few questions over and over again. You can say, you know what? I only want to see questions that I've missed a couple times. Or you can say, I only want to see questions I've missed eight times <laughs> or whatever suits your needs. And that way it can focus on those areas perhaps that you're a little rough in. You went back, you watched some videos, you came back to it. And you simply want to reinforce the idea that you got those concepts and now can answer those questions correctly. We can also select the option that says, I want to see only the items where I've entered notes on those specific questions as I've taken those questions previously. And then simply click on start to go. For our example, let's go ahead and just use exam objectives. So in our case, we'll take 10 from this category and 25 from the network media and we'll run it at 35 questions. Okay, pressure's on. Which protocols operate at the transport layer of the OSI reference model? Well, HTTP is application layer, IP is network layer. TCP and UDP for sure. And IPX is also layer three. So we'll go ahead and go with that. Now we can go to the next question or because we're in this practice mode, we can say grade item and it will show us right here if we got the answers correct and more importantly, an explanation of why those are the correct answers. And then we can go on to the next question. If there's an exhibit that's present as part of a question, this button right here will be active. We can click on it to bring up a separate pop-up window with the graphical representation of whatever that exhibit is showing us as part of the question. 
So we've answered one out of these 35 <laughs> out of these 35 questions. Let's go ahead and end the exam. It's going to say, are you sure? I'm going to say, okay. And it's going to say, well, Keith, you got to kind of answer the questions to get them correct. And so it's showing me my progress. So I'm going to go ahead and exit the exam. So let's say that we've gone through their content. We've studied it. We think we're pretty confident and we're going to go pursue some type of certification on it. Before you go and take the real exam, why not go ahead and give yourself a test without any training wheels to see how well you would do on it. And to do that, we're going to use this option right here, which I call the exam simulation. That's my words for it, because this doesn't give us any training wheels. It doesn't say what sections do you want to go after? What keywords are you looking for? It's simply going to give us a set of questions. We're going to answer those. We won't know until the very end how we did on those questions. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. And let's go ahead and take exam number A. So it's 100 questions. They give us 90 minutes to take it. We'll go ahead and click on start. And the clock is going, just like the real deal right up here. We have this clock that is ticking away, keeping track of how much time is left. And we need to start answering these questions. Okay, which functions can take place at the data link layer of the OSI reference model? Routing is layer three. Message segmenting would be up at layer four. Frame sequency, frame error checking would both be great, and setting voltage levels would be layer one. So I think those two are the right answers. Now, I don't have the option for it to show me the correct answer right now because I am in the exam simulation. <laughs> so I need to go ahead and say next item. So with this, I won't know how I did until the very end of this exam simulation. And if I go just a few ahead, let me find one that's interactive as well, just to give you a feel for that. So here we go, question seven. Move the OSI layers from the left column to the right column and put them in the right order, starting with layer one at the top. So we'll click on load. Now, as we look at this, this is kind of tricky because if we don't read the question, we might get it wrong. It says, put layer one at the top. Well, that's the physical layer. And normally we'd see the physical layer at the very bottom. So we'd want to make sure we put these in the right order. So I'm going to start with physical and then data link and then network and then transport and then session and then presentation, and then application. Then I'm going to go through my acronym in my head to make sure I'm right. All people seem to need data processing. That looks like a winner to me. I can use the up and down buttons to sort them out if I need to change them further. And once I'm comfortable with those answers, I would make sure I click on OK to save that answer. And then I can move forward to the next item. Just like that. And the automatic private IP addressing is 169. <laughs> All right, I'm done. So we'll click on end. Are you sure you want to end the exam? Yes, I am. And I did, oh, horrendously poor because I didn't answer most of the questions. And we can also expect that on a live exam, that if we didn't answer all the questions, we probably wouldn't get credit for them either. The idea is that the Transcender Practice exam here is simulating the time pressures of a live exam. So I'm going to scroll down and say exit exam. Let's take a look at the final option over here, and that is flashcards. Flashcards are fantastic to help reinforce concepts or maybe identify a weak area. They think, you know what? I really don't know that as well as I thought I did. Let me go back and revisit that. So let's take a look at flashcards for a moment. So we'll launch it. And with flashcards, we still have the ability to customize. We can do random or from specific topics or look for keywords or we look for topics where we've incorrectly answered them previously incorrectly or where we have notes associated with those questions. And let's go ahead and just do maybe like five random questions. We'll click on start. And this is what I love about flashcards. What type of cable is used with 10 gig base ER network? Now we could put down here, uh, hopefully a cable that works, but it's probably, I think uh, for 10 gig ER, it's probably single mode fiber. Now it's not gonna actually look at your text and say, is that correct? What you get to do on flashcards, you can say show answer, single mode fiber optic. I'm gonna say that's close enough that I did know what that was and you grade yourself. Now the benefit of grading yourself here is that it lets the system know which areas you're doing well or not so well in. So if you go back later to an exam prep and say, just give me questions based on topics I haven't answered correctly two or more times, this would feed into that information, which is pretty darn cool. So we go to the next question. What TCP port does SMTP use? I think that's TCP port 25. We'll go ahead and click on show answer and lucked out there. And I'm gonna stop while I'm ahead. <laughs> And what I really like about this, there's no multiple choice. Either you have an idea or you know what it is or you don't. And that's one of the benefits that flashcards bring to the table. In this video, we've identified, first of all, that there, yes, are practice exams available through CBT Nuggets for annual subscribers. We also identified where they're located, how to get to them, and how to take advantage of those practice exams once you're inside them. 
The next steps are really simple. Number one, if you do not yet have an annual subscription for CBT Nuggets, you owe it to yourself to go ahead and get one. It's one of the best investments that you're going to make in yourself. Secondly, once you now have full access to all the content, start watching the videos which are of interest to you. And then secondly, as you start learning that content and use the practice exam content to help identify areas that perhaps you're a little weak in or you need to reinforce. So you can go back to those videos and watch those portions again. And it's all part of a really fun journey that you and us as CBT Nuggets all get to take together as we assist you to watch, learn, and conquer. I've had a lot of fun in sharing with you the details about the practice exam content that's available through CBT Nuggets. On behalf of the entire CBT Nuggets team, we wish you the best in your studies and success in your career. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.